we have somebody in the audience who is live streaming this and the person who's live streaming this, who does clubhouse debates, specifically put in a request for people in the YouTube chat to come in and troll. Okay. Hi. Oh, oh wait. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yes. yes, you are loud and clear. Um, why do I think my unbelief is reasonable? Mm -hmm. I was recently a Christian actually for a long time, for like most of my life. So, um, I, I think I come questions? from a good, can good perspective. Can I ask you, yeah, you since can ask you me want to question. bring up your biography, since you're bringing up your biography, can I ask you a question? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, just a few questions. How old are you? I'm 26. Okay. Um, when did you stop having a Christian outlook? Um, it was kind of gradual um, over, I would say, like four years. But I think I was solidified. Well, actually, I'm never, I'm never, I'm never... 100% confident that Christianity is false. Um, but I think I, I've been the most confident in the last six months that I, than I ever have been that, that like Christianity is incompatible with my beliefs. Okay. Um, well, Christianity is a, a composite worldview. So if mm -hmm. you abandon Christianity as a worldview, it means that you will be operating from and thinking from another worldview. What is that worldview? Hmm. Um, maybe like a dualist, determinist, um, um, yeah, I guess like a dualist, determinist view. I okay. guess I don't have a label for my worldview necessarily, but I just have a collection of beliefs that I hold okay. that I hope don't, that I try not to have them contradict with each other. Okay. So you've abandoned a Christian outlook for that. Well, I shouldn't, I don't want to use the word abandon because that may be taken as a pejorative. So you have uh, no longer hold the Christian view for about four or five years. All right. Well, I wouldn't say that. I think I've been in and out of believing in Christianity for about four or five years. But I would say in the last four to six months, I've been more confident that um, it's not true. As in like, okay. as in like, not, I still believe there may be some kind of divine, divine something, right? <laughs> but in terms of the Christian conception of God, and and like some like all the things that are laid out in the Bible and and that I was taught in in like my Protestant upbringing, um, those seem to be incompatible with what I believe to be true. Now, uh, what is it that you do believe and that you have a basis for that would mitigate against the Christian worldview and the God of the Bible being true? Sure. Um, so, so it's kind of hard. So a lot of, so the reason why I, I, this is difficult because it's kind of a collection of things that may seem insignificant, but, um, so like I'm a determinist, but I find it hard to, um, reconcile determinism with Christianity. Like I know the Calvinists are determinists as well, but I don't find their arguments to be convincing for things like um, the problem of evil and like holding people accountable. Like there's this, there's this concept of punishment and accountability within Christianity that I don't seem to, like it doesn't okay. resonate with me anymore. Okay, so I'm sure you're aware that there, I'm sure you've heard the rationale that the existence of God and the Christian God is in virtue that God has revealed himself through creation, through everything, and including human history, culminating in the person of Jesus Christ, 
and the content of the Bible. I take it that you reject that which is represented as God's re revelation. You reject that? No, I like I kind of so believe that, that to be true so in you, a so sense. You accept, no, no. Either either it is the revelation of God of himself, the eternal, ultimate, absolute God who has revealed himself mm -hmm. in and through creation that is undeniable and unmistakable in terms of everything that has been made and including him um, communicating through the course of human history, through various individuals, culminating in Jesus Christ and his representative apostles culminating in the Bible. Either you accept that that revelation reveals God in an undeniable way, or you don't accept that. I don't believe it reveals the Christian God. So okay. no, I don't accept now, that. Okay. Okay. So when we look at the content of what putatively the Christian God represents, we see that he has an attribute set that when we look at it comp compositely, that if we don't accept it, then we're going to be left in a situation where we will have no metaphysical footing or grounding to assert what is, can be, and cannot be. In other words, the Christian God's testimony about himself and his character set are such that he and his character set is indispensable in terms of, of what is at the root of everything, without which we couldn't reason or even say there's an apple on the counter. And the mm -hmm. icing on the cake to that is that you won't be able to make sense of anything unless you acknowledge that that what is at root is the Christian God and that he's revealed himself. So do you believe then that you can make sense of something, any, anything without the Christian God? You made a lot of points there, but I want to respond um, to them. Um, so I, I'm okay with epistemic uncertainty. And I think it is true if you don't have an objective morality or an objective reality that can you, you make sense of anything. Yes, I still believe you can make sense of things without having epistemic okay. certainty. Okay, so in the Christian worldview, God represents himself as the absolute. Now, I'm sure that you would agree that that is how it is represented, even though you don't think it is actual, okay? Yes. That God is, that is, what, is, God is what is absolute in terms of his essential properties. He is unchanging. And being the absolute, he is the basis of everything, including identity, identity over time, whatever regularity or continuity there is, etc. So you reject that God is the absolute. Now, can you make yes. sense of the Christian God? All? You're right. Exactly. Yes. Now, without the Christian God, accepting that he has revealed himself, that he is the absolute. Can you speak intelligibly from a metaphysical perspective um, without there being some underlying absolute? Um, yeah, I think you can speak intelligibly as in like, I think people can understand what I'm saying and I think I can convey That's, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm not talking about semantic appropriation. I'm talking about whatever we invoke the intelligibility derives from the nature of being of whatever is being spoken of. Okay. Intelligibility means that whatever ontology is invoked, whatever nature of being it is for one or more things and their relationship between each other or connectedness is that we can derive that intelligibility from what things actually are. Can you do that? I believe I can, um, even though I don't okay. believe in the Christian God, but okay. I believe what is the what is the absolute that is not the Christian God that grounds any entity and its nature of being from which you could drive intelligibility? Um, so I guess we would just disagree that uh, like I think it's necessary in order to convey concepts. I know you call it a uh, semantic appropriation, but what was the question I asked you? 
uh, what what I use as what is um, the, the thing that grounds. That is, what yes. is the absolute that is not the Christian God? Yeah, um, I'm more of a con coherentist than a foundationalist. I don't have a basic belief in God that you have. What is the absolute that is not the Christian God? I I don't have an absolute in okay, that sense. So so would, so whatever ontology you invoke, whatever entities that you invoke, there is nothing fundamentally that singularly exists that institutes whatever is can be or cannot be. Then, yeah, you not wanted... in my worldview, and I think that's why I have like so have nothing. So nothing. So there. Is, so there is nothing that fundamentally dictates what anything is, can be, or cannot be. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Okay, you you now lose your ability to speak intelligibly at, at a metaphysical level because there nothing nothing means anything because you have no ontology to speak of. If you talk about the grass is the grass is green, the sky is blue, the birds flap their wings, whatever you say, there is nothing that is dictating any events at all. There is nothing that is that you can invoke and defend that dictates what anything is. Is there a reason why any uh, event is, or is there no reason why any events are? I think if I was to look at the reason, I would I would be looking at like the causal factors that caught like ended okay. up leading to that event. So I'm a determinist. So, so there's a so there's a causal principle. Yeah. Okay. Is there an absolute that institutes and secures that there is the actuality and ongoingness of the causal principle? Um, I would maybe, no, I don't think so. Not for me, so there, like not so, an absolute. Okay. So, so what makes the causal principle real? Because I think we can observe things being consistent while still appreciating no, that there may be a degree that's, that's of randomness. Begging, that's begging the question. I want to know what if it can, well, first of all, you are inferring because there is a conjunction of events or that you might have predictive success. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the causal principle would, would be real. That's not necessarily the case outside of the Christian worldview. Now, you believe mm -hmm. that the causal principle is real, but you also told me you don't believe that there is any fundamental absolute that dictates what is, can be, and cannot be. Now. Yes, when but I don't believe it's real. I don't actually believe okay. it's real in the sense okay. that you're... Is the, cons is the causal principle something that is? Um, yes, but I don't think it's 100% certain. What like, makes... A, there's what, a degree of what, randomness. What... what institutes and secure that the causal principle is that it is real that it is real i'm having an issue with the term real because that that like real as opposed to it is a figment of your imagination that every time you have a thought it's a spontaneous occurrence okay being unrelated to everything else now i'm actually is there open something to... is there something that institutes the actuality of the causal principle being real? For me, no, and I'm open to it being a figment so, of my so, imagination. So it's just you, so... So, so you, what you are saying then is that the causal principle is not creaturely, meaning that it is instituted and secured by God. The causal principle is something that simply is without... Uh, being real, either in virtue that it is derivative or that the causal principle itself is absolute within itself. So is the causal yeah. principle just real without uh, a reason as to why it is real, either externally or internally? No, and that's why I wouldn't agree with the term real. Like I still use it as a tool. Either it's um, real or it's a, it's a fiction of a, a spontaneous mental event of yours. Is the causal principle real or is it fiction? Um, 
I guess I'll have to say that it's fiction, but I can explain what I mean by then, that. Then, then I'm not going to pay attention to your fiction. Um, I, I, I think the language you're using here is limited, but I, I can explain wait what minute, I mean by that. Do you know, I'm sh have you ever seen doppelgangers? Um, no. You know what a, do a doppelganger is? Like doppelganger humans is that look like each other? That's right. Okay. So if you yes. go on to, if you go on to Google or Bing and you type in female doppelgangers and click on images, one mm -hmm. of the top hits will be two young women who look like identical twins, but they're not, mm -hmm. they're just, they're just, um, they're doppelgangers, right? Now, suppose one of those women won the lottery and, and she died and had no next of kin. But the other female doppelganger came before the court and said, I am entitled to her estate because I am her sister. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, would that be real or fiction? Um, a fiction, right? Like, because she, right. she isn't what she's judge, claiming to be. Would, okay. But she says, but Your Honor, you, you can obviously see I'm her twin sister. And the mm -hmm. judge would say, well just because there's a striking similarity does in fact make it real that you possess sisterhood in actuality your claim to sisterhood is fiction and he would dismiss her entitlement to the estate mm -hmm. you yeah. want me to accept rationales that are built upon the claim of the causal principle but the causal principle is not uh supported by you as being real so your claims are built upon fiction. Yeah. Um, yeah, but there's there's reasons why I believe my claims to be true. Is even... the causal principle real or fiction? <laughs> um, I can explain what I mean by that, but I would say under your definition, it's fiction. It, is it? Okay, it's fiction. Well, then anything yes. that you try to build upon the causal principle direct or indirect will be fiction. Um, yeah, I think you should have epistemic humility when you're making these inferences based on the causal principle. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so in that sense, I so I, so whatever state of affairs, any entity or state of affairs that you invoke that you want me to accept as true from which you'll derive intelligibility. There's this nothing, is very interesting there, because there's nothing. Oh. Can I finish, please? Yes, yeah, sorry. So whatever whatever prop true prop propositions that you invoke to me as true, there's nothing dictating and instituting that these things are true. Is there? Um I ascribe to a different theory of truth, but according to your theory, no, um, there would be nothing dictating, but that's not how I um, engage with something that I okay. believe to be true. Okay, so when you give me a true proposition, is it is that these propositions are actual? actual. They're real? Do I real? When um, you as tell in, me like, a proposition is true, is it mm -hmm. real and actual? I wouldn't use those terms because I think I know what you mean by those terms and then and what I then would, what does it what does it mean for something to be true then? So, so I'm, I'm more of a um, coherentist, and I think that you take information from various different sources in order to um, um, build upon your beliefs. What do you mean, information about what? So, like for the girls, um, I would take the doppelganger girls. Not only oh, would I take so their appearance, are, are, but also their DNA. Are you and talking about information about things that are real? Um, I think that I don't believe in like an objective reality, but um, no, so so nothing things so that nothing I perceive is, so so nothing is real. You told me you believe in reality. What do you mean so by real? Obviously, if you believe in reality, <laughs> then you must believe that there are one or more things that are within the domain that you call reality. So does yes, reality I have that... encompass the things that are real? Yes, I have those beliefs, but I don't believe. At, um... okay. well, you said you accept reality. 
Did I hear you correctly? I accept Rhea. I don't think I said that, but I... I thought you did. I accept that the world I'm living in is consistent and I can trust the things that I'm interacting with to be consistent. When you say the world, is there anything yeah. that is is contained within the word world as a set that is real? <laughs> what what's your definition of real? I mean, we gonna play this little game like 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 you're a fifteen year old at the cafeteria table, really? No, it's just because real can can real means mean... that something is true and actual. It exists as opposed to it's merely and purely only a figment of somebody's imagination. Right. Is Luke so Skywalker, do you mean real? Is real? Did Luke Skywalker ever actually exist? Um, not that is I'm he aware real? Of okay. You know what I mean by real. Let's stop playing games. Do you believe that anything is actual, true, real? I don't believe. Um... So I don't believe in a reality apart from human minds. So, oh, so in that you're a sense, solipsist. Well, Are you no, a that's a no. A solipsist okay. is someone so, who so doesn't. Are there even... other minds? Are there other minds? Yes, I believe there to be other do minds. Mi- do minds exist? Yes, I believe other minds to exist. Okay, so they're real. Yeah, yeah, I would define that as real. Okay, so are are each of these minds that you say are real? Mm-hmm. Do they, uh, when you assert that they are real and actual, do they exist because they are absolute within themselves and have no beginning, or are they real because they're derivative? I think they're real because they're derivative. I think I would okay. so agree to what that is, side of what that. What is argument. the absolute then that all real things derive from, including minds? I'm unsure what it is, but I don't believe it to be the Christian God. Okay. Do you have an identifiable absolute? Um, not currently, but I, I would okay. I'm not so so everything that you believe derives from I don't know. Is that right? Um, yeah, I guess in the, like before I form any belief, it, I first but come from the your place that- But all of your beliefs are based upon I don't know. Based upon. Um, but all no, of your so beliefs I, are based upon I don't know, right? So, no, so my new beliefs, I would challenge with my old beliefs and with new information that I intake basically. Right. But you, but you, but you, you are, you're, you're putting together a variety of beliefs to come up with some new beliefs. What I want to know is whatever Mm -hmm. beliefs that you have within the set of your beliefs, is there anything that is absolute that makes whatever these fundamental parameters of beliefs are that make other beliefs possible? Is there anything absolute that makes these fundamental parameters of beliefs true and real and actual? Um, I'm going to answer this, but I really don't want you to cut me off. But um, okay, so I I don't believe there to be an absolute. However, um, I do have things that I trust. I do have things that I trust highly. So like, um, I take some things from people on authority. um, And so I'll use those things with experts who know more. Why does anything exist then? Okay, well, here's the problem. Okay, I'm going to cut to the chase. Since okay. you refuse to acknowledge that God is and that he's revealed himself in, in creation and human history, it means that you reject that each and every putative fact is creaturely and, and consequently revelatory of God. What you are left with is an array of what we call brute facts, that these facts have no fundamental explanation as to why they are. Okay, They mm-hmm. don't have an explanation either externally or in- internally. Okay, there is no identifiable ultimate or absolute that institutes or secures why anything is. So all you have is fundamentally and 
an array of what we call brute facts. Okay, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. Okay, brute facts are meaningless because they are uninterpretable. There is no fundamental ontology from which you can derive interpretability because there's nothing that dictates what anything is from your perspective. Um, I think, well, I still believe in like- Do you disagree, with what, I, do you disagree yes. with what I just said? Good, then what is the absolute then that dictates fundamentally what anything is? I think we're just gonna have to disagree, uh, agree to disagree that there needs to be an absolute. Okay, so there, so so things just um, exist for no reason at all. Um, no, because I still believe in the causal chain. It, okay, you, you're not, but you see, you just, but okay, is the causal train chain real? <laughs> We're kind of we're kind of going in circles here. That's a, no, that's a legitimate question, and the reason why you're saying, "Oh, we're kind of going in circles here," because you don't want to answer it. Um. So you want according to, talk to your definition. Your mouth. Oh. All I want to know is this: so you're invoking you're invoking individual and composite facts that have no identifiable reason as to why it is, can be, or cannot be, right? Um, yes, and that's why I have epistemic humility. Okay, so you have so you have no ontology of facts, then, do you? Mm. Remind me what that means. Ontology, like ontology would be the na the nature of being either on a small or a grand scale. Do you have any ontology of why to any any event or entity as to what makes it what it is, can be or cannot be? Is there anything that is identifiable that dictates that? Um, I wouldn't say there's a constant that you have like um, a divine being. However, I think there are patterns that we can recognize. No, no. Yeah, I did yeah, this you're, as... just taught, you're just giving me a wall of words. Is there one concrete thing that dictates why anything is? No, not for me. Okay, so therefore, you you have no fundamental basis as to why anything is. You just assert it is without a basis. I have basis, but not a consistent what is thing. The, what that... is the ab okay? What is the absolute that will provide the basis for any statement of what is? I think I should like stop the conversation. That's a legitimate think... question, and you need you need to answer instead of dodging it. Um, I'll answer. I don't think there's an absolute. Okay, um, so, that I... so there's no. So there's no ontological reason why anything is then? There's no ontological reason why anything is. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there's by... nothing that fundamentally dictates why anything is in your view. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. Okay, good. You lose your ability to speak intelligibly because intelligibility is derived from the nature of being but there's nothing that dictates why anything is in your view. Um, yeah, you no want consistency. To, would, you like, would you like to, would you like to take- But that's the, my the own intelligence. Let me listen to me. Would you like to take the philosophical suicide pill and try to disconnect intelligibility from ontology? Do you want to do that? Uh, sure. Oh. How 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 do you have how do you have metaphysical intelligibility for any entity when nothing dictates what anything is? Um, I I understand that it's circular, but I think any kind of metaphysical worldview, I guess, is is eventually going to become circular, even even in um, the presuppositionalist what, view. What, it's what, it's what also going to. What was the question that I asked you? Um, how do you reconcile no ontology? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you derive any intelligibility when there's mm -hmm. nothing that dictates what anything is? 
I could explain how I do that, but I also think you're going to get annoyed because I'm going to be repeating myself. Okay. So ontology, excuse me, the intelligibility of entities or states of affairs is in is not in virtue of what makes anything what it is so where did do, where does the intelligibility derive from um my answer isn't going to be satisfying to you i don't think but it was a good conversation anyways um but i think we should end it here maybe I just hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's fine. Um, I have to answer a message anyway. Okay. Well, thanks for the conversation. Yeah, it was fun. I like uh, challenging my own views. Well, you have no basis for your views. They're grounded in nothing. Tara Duper, I have invited up. You have no ontology for anything but you want us to believe that you have a viable intelligibility, but the intelligibility has no ontology. There's no nature of being for your intelligibility. So how do you have intelligibility when it doesn't derive from anything? Well, I was wondering how it's humble. I heard her mention that it's humble. She's humble before. How is it humble to make assertions without reference to whatever institutes what is and what is not? It seems like you'd just be making assertions with reference to your own imagination. Basically, you're saying you're, you're God. How is that humble? Um, well, what I mean by epistemic humility is I am always open to the idea of being. I didn't ask you what you meant by being... it. Did you hear my question? Well, it's because I don't think you interpreted what I said there correctly because that response doesn't make sense. Does your intelligibility have an ontology? Um, Darth, I think we should, um, I should, I think we should that's stop. A, that's a legitimate question. I'm going to say no, because okay. like, so, so, so your, your intelligibility derives from nothing actual, no nature of being. Um, yes, it doesn't, uh, derive from so any your intelligence. It doesn't derive actual. from the nature of being at all. So if it doesn't derive from any nature of being, then what does it derive from? It derives from my collection of experiences. That's an ontology. This is funny. Cause I, I used to do the same thing when I was a Christian, right? I would collect, you know, information and change okay. my views did you within. Did you just invoke an ontology? What do you mean by that? Did you just invoke, I said, where does your intelligibility derive from? Mm -hmm. You said your experiences. Are you not invoking an ontology? What's an ontology one more time? A nature of being? Um, yes. Okay, so you have now contradicted yourself. I think my my um, my epistemics are going to be circular. Did you, did you contradict yours yourself? Are. Did you did you contradict yourself? I don't believe so. Did, did, did you tell me that your intelligibility is not derived from any ontology? If I contradicted myself, it's just because I'm not super familiar did with the term ontology. I, I, I've explained ontology throughout this entire conversation. It is the nature of being for any entity or state of affairs that is invoked. I asked you specifically, 
does your intelligibility derive from any ontology at all? And you said, no, it does not. That was because I misinterpreted what ontology was, but yes. So that's I would lie. say you're a, that's a lie. I wasn't born yesterday. Well, she wants to, my, to change her yeah. claim, Darth. So let's hear what, yeah. where her, uh, okay. Okay. All right. her that's intelligibility a, that, comes from point. ontologically. W what, so is the on yes. what is the, ont what is the ontological foundation of your intelligibility? Um, so then again, I would say a collection of my own experiences and knowledge of, of the things around me and um, okay. through um, observation and experience. Oh, okay. So your intelligibility comes from your self-consciousness and your sense experience? Yes, as well as input from other people. Okay. Now, when you say yourself, the I or, or the me, does mm -hmm. that does that refer to the chronology chron, chrono, excuse me the chronology of mental states? Yeah, I think okay. so. What what concretely unifies those mental states? Like the causal chain, maybe. Well, you you you, you can't invoke the causal chain uh, because you refuse to say that it was real. Um. Well, I don't believe it to be real in the way that you define what, real. What, you know, we're not going to play these little games, okay? I wasn't born yesterday. Is it actual, real, actual, it's true? It exists as opposed to it doesn't exist? I believe it to exist, yes. Okay, so you, believe it's, so you believe it's real? I believe it's real, yes. Good. Now what unifies the chronology of mental states that you refer to as your self-consciousness what concretely unifies each mental state in a time index can you say that one more time i'm sorry i was reading a message what yeah 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 i can tell that you're reading a message i can tell that no just the side chat you. yeah the side okay. chat yeah right i was mm -hmm. just reading the yeah. side chat. right right yeah so I want to know what is it <laughs> that, that concretely unifies the chronology of mental states that you refer to as the singular I? What unifies it? Again, I'm going to appeal to the causal chain, but you are not satisfied with me okay. appealing to it because you okay. don't think I can. What is, is, the, is, the causal chain, is the causal chain absolute in and of itself and eternal? <laughs> I don't want to do this um, anymore, Darth. Of course you don't, because you have nowhere to go. Your your worldview is bankrupt. The reason why you don't want to accept Christianity as true is because it cramps your style. You don't want to bow to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and that he's revealed himself in creation and through human history. When we probe your worldview, which you are relying on in order to escape the Christian worldview, it turns out upon questioning you here, and I gave you fair and reasonable questions, you, you, you contradict yourself, you flip flop, you say absolutely nonsensical things. And then you just say, oh, we're going around in circles, which is code for, I don't know what to say anymore because I've been caught with my hand in the cookie jar that I have no defensible worldview whatsoever. I am still open to um, Christianity. Just right now, I don't find it to be convincing. No, you're not open. No, you're not open to it. Jesus Christ revealed himself in history he said he's the way the truth and the life and he commands all men everywhere okay to repent and believe on him are you willing to bow the knee to him as lord and savior now if i was convinced that it was true yes i would okay then you're not open to him you are hostile to him right now um okay and if you die if you die tonight in a car crash you will spend eternity separated from him not because he's a cosmic killjoy, but because he offers each one of us the opportunity to be saved, to repent and believe on him so that we can love and enjoy him forever. But you don't want that, so you're not open to him. I would like that if I believed it to be true, but I just don't believe you, it to be you true. Wanna, you, you, I, I know you don't, but you see, here's the problem. The reason why you don't believe it's true, because you don't want it to be true, because when I ask you why your worldview is true, it turned into an absolute train wreck of an explanation. You have no reason to believe what you invoke to be true has any basis whatsoever, but you still believe it to be true, even though you have no basis for it whatsoever. But then you want to tell me, oh, I want to believe in Christianity because it's true, but 
I don't have a reason to believe it's true, but you don't have a reason to believe anything in your worldview is true either, but you believe it. So you're violating, you are violating your own criterion of belief when you adopt your not Christian world. Um, I guess uh, I am open to like a divine being or a divine presence. No, you're not. No, you're not open to it. But I, I'm definitely. That's, that's, em that's empty rhetoric. Hmm. Okay. okay. Do you have a criterion of belief for the Christian worldview that if it were fulfilled, you would believe in the Christian worldview? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. The worldview that you're operating from now that opposes the Christian worldview, has that worldview been, has that worldview fulfilled that criterion of belief? It's it's kind of like a lack of belief in a divine being. So it, it has less no, of that's, a criteria. That's, okay, yeah. So, so in other words, it's kind of like you just dodged my question. No, it doesn't. I was, okay. So no, it doesn't have the same criteria as no, believing no. in the Christian do God. You, do, you, do you apply the same criterion of belief by which you dismiss the Christian worldview, does your worldview, is it fulfilled by the criterion of belief that you use to dismiss the Christian worldview? No, because it wouldn't make sense to, to apply the same so, criteria. So, so your criterion of belief is arbitrary then, isn't it? No, I would have a different criteria. So belief. do you use that criterion of belief for both the Christian worldview and not the Christian worldview? Um, no, I do not. Then you're arbitrary. And being arbitrary is irrational. And the, but you see, since, is, is your adoption of the not Christian worldview arbitrary? Say that one more time, sorry. Is your adoption of the not Christian worldview arbitrary? I don't believe it to be. Good. What is the what is the rationale for the not Christian worldview? How does how does that fulfill your criterion of belief? What makes your but, worldview true? I want to explain, but I also feel as though you might cut me off. What makes your worldview true? So for me, I like to have the um, the least amount of contradictions in my beliefs. And because I had more beliefs that contradicted Christianity, it made it harder for me to accept Christianity as true given my other beliefs. Okay, okay. that's not an answer to my question. Okay. Uh, how is your not Christian worldview true? Um. Because it aligns so, so, with what okay, I already oh, know to be true about the world or what I already believe oh, to be true about the world. Okay. So, so you, uh, one of your criterion of belief is that there um, must not be contradictions. So in your worldview, the law of non-contradiction is true. Mm -hmm. Okay. What makes the law of non-contradiction true? Um, I kind of accept the laws of logic as they are, but I don't know what, if what I know. Makes them, what makes them true? Do you, are you arbitrarily adopting it? Or is there something that institutes and secures the universality of the laws of logic? I'm open to the laws of logic being criticized as no, well. Sir, I have, ma'am, ma'am, listen, what makes them true since you're operating that they are true is there something that makes them true or do you just adopt it because you would rather not be in a world of absurdity probably the second one uh yeah okay so so you are rejecting christianity on arbitrary grounds because you pr you prefer a non-absurd world over an absurd world but you can't mm -hmm. offer a defense that you're not in the uh, uh, absurd world. Um, I could offer a defense, but it may not be satisfying. To is you. your is your is, do you is your world fundamentally absurd or not? 
Well, our satisfaction is irrelevant. Either you can offer a rational defense or not. Yeah. You see, I'm just showing you by these questions that you're flipping, you're flopping, you're dodging, you're inconsistent, you're arbitrary. And you want to sit there and say, oh, there's contradictions in Christianity. But you see, the problem is there's no law of contradiction for you to wield to use against Christianity. Because in your world, there's nothing that provides for its actuality. You're operating from a universal principle, but there's no way for you to instantiate it. So what you want to say is, well, there's contradictions in Christianity. That makes it unintelligible, and that means it's uninstantiatable. So do you believe that Christianity is uninstantiatable? No, oh, I don't. So we, can, so we can instantiate Christianity as true? I mean, I, I think you can give good rationalizations for why you believe. No, 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 no. Either either you accept that Christianity is instantiated and therefore true, or it is not instantiated and you reject it. What do you mean by instantiated? Meaning Established that it to is, be the it, case. It, it, yeah, yeah. Yes, there you go. Established that it is the case in all possible worlds, I would say no. No, 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 no. Is- Listen, let's, let's not play these little philosophical nomenclature games, okay? I know you think you're very clever by talking about all possible worlds. Right now, you do not accept the Christian worldview because it has not been instantiated to be the case, right? Because the, 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 the alleged contradictions, the alleged contradictions mitigate completely against the instantiability of the Christian worldview, right? I think you're implying bad intentions on me. And so no, I said nothing reason. about your intentions. You know what? I'm getting a little bit tired of your dodging and dancing. Okay. Now, do you reject the Christian worldview because it has contradictions in it, therefore making it uninstantiatable? Hmm. No, I think the fact that it has contradictions may be able to so, be reconciled. So the Christian worldview is instantiatable? <laughs> it's defensible, but instantiatable, no, no, no it's not okay, instant. Then, then it's tr- no, if it's defensible, then it's true. We're not talking about a putative defensibility. We're talking about an actual defensibility. So either the Christian worldview is instantiated or it is not. I don't think everything that's defensible. Do you accept that the Christian worldview is instantiated? No. Okay. Is that because there are contradictions? No. Okay. But you just told me you reject it because there are contradictions. I reject it because it contradicts with my other beliefs. Right. But no, I don't reject it because there's. Okay. So what of your beliefs is real? that you use to mitigate against Christianity? Well, it's a cluster of beliefs, right? It's not one specific belief. What are any of you, name me one of your beliefs that is real and true. Um, <laughs> I believe determinism to be true. Okay, now, is there something that is absolute that institutes and secures that that state of affairs is real? No. Okay, so you believe it without any warrant then, do you? I believe it with warrant. There's nothing that makes it real. Um, I'm open. Anything that makes that belief real? (laughs) Not by your definition. No, is there anything that makes the belief real? Stop playing these word games. I don't think this is productive. Okay, yeah, it's not productive because you've been caught uh, in your worldview being utterly flip-flopping, incoherent, and indefensible. That's why you're dodging the questions. Whenever I ask you a fair question about why you reject Christianity, it leads to nowhere. And then when I show that it leads to nowhere, you go, oh, we're just going around in a circle. This isn't being productive. You said your beliefs mitigate against the Christian worldview. I ask you, what makes any one of your beliefs true? Do you have an answer for that? Yeah, 
is how convenient she's on the phone. We'll move her down to the audience. Yeah, how convenient. Another fake phony fraud, but at least at least to her credit, she she was cordial. But she pulled the same obfuscation games that that all the atheists do, all the dodging, the flip flopping. Okay. Another train wreck of an of an unbeliever. Okay. 